Thanks once again for joining us. Our next guest is an author whose second book for young adults addresses several themes that seem to run through the lives of teens. Loss, hope, stereotypes, and love. It is called The Princess of Las Pulgas. And the author, Lee McKenzie, joins us today. Wonderful to have you on Bay Sunday. I'm really excited to be here. The Princess of Las Pulgas. I want to step back a bit because I really want to talk about your first novel first uh, and, uh, and how your whole writing career started in a way. And this one was called Sliding on the Edge. And I understand right. it was really inspired by a, a, an article that you read in the, in the paper. Actually, it was. Uh, I had read an article about, a, um, I guess, a study that had been done on um, some university campuses. And they found that um, one out of five of the university students, Ivy League students, uh, admitted to some sort of self-abuse. And I thought that was pretty horrific. So I, I was going to write about it, and I didn't know it was going to be a novel. I thought I'd write an article, but it turned out to be a novel instead, and so that's how it came about. And, and apparently struck a chord. Well, what about this, this current book, The Princess of Las Pulgas? I mean, was it also inspired by someone or something that made the headlines? And not really. Um, I, 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 maybe I was prescient, because I started writing this before the major downturn in the economic uh, climate, and um, then right after that, after I after I'd started the book, the economy went down, and uh, I seemed to be a topical author by accident. And let's, let's talk about the storyline, because, I mean, I think there is a quote that really sums up this book. She had everything, and then suddenly, almost nothing. Right. That's exactly how I started the book. I started with the question, what if? What if somebody had everything, a beautiful home, a lovely family, and uh, comforts? You know, um, and this is a teenage girl a teenage who pretty girl. much has a great life, Carly. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And she loses it all? Her father dies, and uh, her mother has to make some changes in their lives, which reduces them considerably in their standard of living. They and she move. almost sort of has to go to the other side of the tracks then? She goes to the other side of the tracks, and with uh, certain expectations of what she's going to find. And um, she has no experience uh, with anything but her old lifestyle, and she has to learn how to live a different way. I, I bet this is something that really resonates with a lot of kids. What kind of response have you gotten I've from had this? some very positive response. I was at uh, one of the high schools just a couple of months ago, and a couple of the girls came up and told me that they had re really appreciated reading this one, and uh, we're looking forward to my next one. I said, well, I better get busy then. <laughs> and maybe gives them a, a greater appreciation of, I guess, uh, differences I in, think in so. people and environments. I think so. Uh, it, it said that, that all fiction is um, partially autobiographical. I mean, do you think it's true in this instant? I mean, do, do, do you have any sort of uh, you know, feeling? Are you the, like the pr princess of Las Pulgas? Not exactly, but obviously my family had some downturns. You know, they wasn't always smooth. We had some losses in our, in our lives, and uh, I think I drew on those experiences, having to change schools when I was uh, a junior, actually. So I knew what it was like to go into a junior year in a new school with totally different people and start all over again. Yeah, learning to adapt, and were you embraced? Actually, I was. I, I was surprised. And I think that's what I wanted Carly to be, surprised, you know, by the fact that she didn't expect to fit in, and she actually did. The Princess of Las Pulgas, where did that title come from? If you're from around here, you always yeah. think Alabina de Las Pulgas, down, yes. down on the peninsula. Right. Well, that was a area. perfect name for me, because I wanted something that, that she would find disgusting, yeah. which the fleas. And Pulgas, flea, right, flea, flea, flea market, right. right. And, uh, but I kind of like the sound of Las Pulgas. So, um, and she is known as a princess in school yes. because she sort of doesn't fit in at first. Yes, she doesn't fit in and she makes it apparent that she doesn't want to fit in. It takes her a while to find out that she belongs there. And we know that you've got a, a new novel that's uh, on the track now and it's mm -hmm. about uh, juvenile neglect and Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's? I a young know. person's book about Alzheimer's? <laughs> it does seem like a disconnect, doesn't it? <laughs> but what I like to do a lot of times in my first novel, uh, Sliding on the edge, um, I connected uh, two different generations. I like to do that. I like cross-generational themes. And in uh, the third novel, I will do that with an older person and a neglected, abused boy. Wonderful. When do we, when sh should we expect to see that I one? don't know. I just subbed okay. it, so we're waiting. 
<laughs> we'll put it on the uh, wait for list. How's I that? Hope so. Lee, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, I enjoyed it. Lee McKenzie is the author of The Princess of Las Pulgas, and you can find the book online and at your local bookstore. For more information, log on to cleemckenziebooks.com. Next up, it all started with two adults who wanted to send a message of hope to bullied gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgendered adolescents that it gets better. We'll meet the authors whose small video project has evolved into a huge global movement when we return.